In the last video, we were trying to find a value, and apparently the value 582, uh, in one of these boxes, and these boxes conceal secret numeric data, and one of them happens to conceal 582, possibly, possibly not. We want to determine if 582 does appear in one of those boxes, and we found if we just start with box 0 and then try box 1 and box 2 and box 3, that not surprisingly, the time to find 582, whether it's there or not, will be proportional to typically, except in the best case scenario, if we're extremely lucky, the time will be proportional to the number of boxes. And we were wondering if we could do better if we had some hints. So that if, for example, we looked in box 3, and it turns out box 3 is a good one to start with if we have such hints. If we look in box 3, and the answer is that no, that box doesn't contain 582, but if there is a box that contains 582, it would be somewhere to the right. So that's the kind of hint that we were given. And we found if we used these hints, we could actually find whether 582 is there or not much, much faster. Um, although we don't know exactly how much faster just yet, so you may be wondering, maybe that's twice as fast with the hints. So we'll get to analyzing the time. But before we get to that, I want to talk about, is it really reasonable to assume that we might sometimes find ourselves with hints like this? And the answer is yes, because the biggest hint that we could have in a situation like this is knowing that the list, the array, the values in that in those boxes appear in sorted order. It's been sorted. And we'll assume it's sorted in increasing order. And any time I have a collection in increasing order, I essentially have a hint. Because if I open this box 3, and I find that box 3 contains the value, uh, we'll just mash the keyboard here, there, 80, 893, what does that tell me? Well, it gives me a hint. It tells me not only does box 3 not contain 582, the value that's so important to me to find, but it tells me if 582 appears somewhere in this collection, then it appears to the left of box 3. It appears in one of these three boxes here. So that's the sort of hint I'm talking about. I can instantly rule out not only the box I looked in, but all of the boxes that to the right, which must contain values that are at least as high as 893, and probably potentially much higher. So we'll look again, and the obvious box to look in next is the one that's in the middle of the remaining boxes, right? So we'll look in box 1. And suppose we open box 1 and it has uh, 56. That tells us if 582 is there, it must be in box 2. And we'll look in box 2, and of course if the answer is 582, we'll throw a big party. If the answer is, let's say, 140, We'll, we'll, we'll go home and cry, right? But either way, we'll know right away, as soon as we look in this box, whether 582 is there. And we only had to look at three boxes. We never opened a box 0 or 4 or 5 or 6 in that scenario. OK, now, um, to give you a more practical example, imagine you have a phone book, right? Let's, let's do that down here. Suppose we, we want to find a name in the phone book find whether their particular name appears in the phone book. And I picked this example because a phone book is sorted alphabetically by name. And so effectively, every time we open a page and look at a name, we get a hint as to whether or not the name we're looking for appears before or after that one. And therefore, here's the algorithm that we would use to find a name in the phone book. And it's going to be the same algorithm we just saw when we had hints in our, in our boxes looking for 582. We're going to say, first, we'll look at the name, or in general, the value, if I'm looking at things that aren't names. Look at the name in the middle, in the exact middle of the phone book. And if that's the name you want, awesome, you're done. But otherwise, the name that we're looking for must either appear in the first half or the second half of the phone book. And so if we have a phone book that we won't, don't mind destroying, a nice algorithm is throw out half the phone book. Throw out the half that the value can't appear, that that name can't appear in, right? So if I'm looking for Dave in my phone book, and I open up to the middle, we're going to assume this phone book is sorted by first names for some reason. If I'm looking for Dave, and I open up the phone book, and the first name I look at is Mike. Here, let's, let's draw a little phone book here. So we'll just imagine that we took all the pages of the phone book, and, or all the names in the phone book, and we laid them out. So here's, you know, the first name alphabetically is on the left, the last possible name, like Zeke or something, is on the right, and we open it up, we're looking for Dave, 
So our question is, does the phone book have Dave? And we open it up, and the first name we look at is Mike. And Mike is somewhere in the middle. So here's Mike in the middle of the phone book. And we can immediately th throw out this entire half of the phone book. The half, In fact, even Mike himself gets thrown out, because we know if Dave is there at all, Dave must appear somewhere in this part of the phone book. So that's what I mean by throw out half the phone book. We could literally rip up, burn. We don't need that half of the phone book, unless, of course, we ever want to find another name other than Dave. But why would we want a name, a name other than Dave? Let's see. And then, of course, we're going to repeat this. So that's the basic idea. Look at the name in the middle of the phone book, throw out half the phone book, and when we've thrown out half the phone book, let's see if we can do that we'll throw out half the phone book so we won't just exit we'll set it on fire here there we go don't try this at home phone book is gone or that half of the phone book is gone all we have is this part and now the problem looks like we have a phone book again and we know how to find a name in the phone book we look at the name in the very middle and we check what that name is and depending on the answer we throw out half of what remains so that's the algorithm now we're going to talk about what it's called and then we're going to worry about how fast is it so what is it called? It's called binary search. And that's as opposed to sequential or linear search, which is what we called it when we just looked at all of the uh, the values in order, one after another, what's in box 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, as we're finding a value. So in binary search, we always start by looking at the middle. And in order to use binary search, and this is very important, in order to use binary search, must be sorted. I must know that my collection is appears in sorted order. And I must be able to jump to the middle of the collection, otherwise I shouldn't be using binary search since the thing I do repeatedly is look at the middle of whatever portion of my collection I'm looking at. Alright, so what do we want to know now? We want to know how fast is binary search. Actually, before we get to how fast is binary search, maybe we'll finish up the phone book example. So, if I want to find a name in the phone book, I should use this binary search idea. Start in the middle, then the middle of that, then the middle of that, until I hone in on wherever the name is. right? So I might have an experience of first start in the middle, then look in the middle of the remaining part of the phone book, and then if I know that the name I'm looking for is somewhere to the right, then we'll look in the middle of that part to the right, and then maybe it'll be to the right of that, so we'll look in the middle of that, and we'll keep sort of bouncing back and forth, honing in on wherever that name either is, or would have been if it were somewhere in my phone book. Suppose instead of finding a name in the phone book, though, I want to find a phone number. How long does it take me to find a phone number? So, find a phone number in the phone book. It occurs to me that you may not have much experience with phone books. Phone books are these things we had a long time ago before the invention of the internet and Google and your cell phone and whatever, um, where if you wanted to find someone's telephone number, you looked up their name, and their names were alphabetical, and when you find their name, you found their telephone number right next to it. Um, on the other hand, if I want to find a phone number in the phone book, there is no easy way to do that, because the phone book is not sorted by phone number, it's sorted by name. So if I want to find a phone number, I have to first check, is it the first phone number in the book? How about the next? How about the next? How about the next? How about the next? And it's going to take me a very long time. In particular, the time is going to be proportional to the number of elements, because because the phone book is not sorted by telephone number, I'm, I can't use binary search. I'm forced to use sequential search, or we might call it linear search, and the time is proportional to the number of uh, entries in the phone book. And the reason I raise this is because if we were to look at the time to find a name in the phone book, we might estimate that that might take, say, let's say 30 seconds. 30 seconds of flipping back and forth through the phone book. And if you don't believe me, you should try this experiment yourself with a phone book. And you'll discover, and I'm assuming I have, say, you know, maybe I have, uh, let's say, 200,000 names, uh, name and number entries in my phone book, which seems like a reasonable number of phone books for a large, uh, for some sort of metropolitan area. There might be 200,000 people living there. Um, and uh, apparently if I have about 200,000 people, it will take me 30 seconds to find a name. On the other hand, the time to find a phone number in the book will be 
how long will it take me? I'm going to have to look at the first entry, and then the second entry, and then the third entry. And if it's somewhere in the middle, I'm going to have to look at 100,000 entries. And it turns out if you try this experiment of reading every single telephone number in the phone book, it's going to take you a few weeks, is my guess. I haven't actually timed this because I have better things to do with my time, but I estimate it takes about a few weeks. And the reason I'm giving you these numbers is to give you a sense that this algorithm here, sequential search, the one where I find an, a phone number in the book looking one after another, is apparently um, very slow. And we know it's it's called linear time, the time is proportional to the number of entries, whereas this first algorithm where I have a I want to find a name in the phone book and I use binary search, binary search, that is apparently much faster because I believe I can find a name in 30 seconds. I've performed this experiment many times and it does take me somewhere between 20 and, and 30 seconds to find a name. And so that that's probably not linear time. So the question is, how fast is it? How fast is it? And we'll explore that in the next video when we actually try out some numbers and work out uh, how fast binary search is. I'll see you there.